morning, friends. Greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human body, is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your prescriptions and get on a good nutritional supplement program or help a loved one get off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. We welcome your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number today on the Bright Side and every day on the Bright Side. That's 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com, and you can order products directly off the website. You can also go to brightsideben.com. We also have archive page up at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. And for you guys interested in purchasing any of my Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% gel made with 25% fat-soluble, premium, stabilized, lipophilic, vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrance, no emulsifiers, no waxes. Everything in our Retinol 5% gel is used by your skin either as an active ingredient or as a functional ingredient. You can find out all about it at brightsideben.com. I'm sorry, at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking skin. We're talking hyperpigment, too much pigment, splotchy, dark spots on the skin technically called melasma, hyperpigmentation, melasma, whatever you want to call it, is caused by the same thing that causes all, and I mean all health issues. And it's not bacteria, and it's not viruses, and it's not germs or genetics or little ticks or little elves or any other disempowering nonsense you hear from representatives of the medical model. Degeneration is behind disease, degeneration, when the body doesn't heal itself. If you got an issue that's not resolving itself, whether it's pigmentation or autoimmunity or cancer or circulatory issues or whatever, if your body is not healing, something is wrong because the body is a regenerating system. So degeneration is the opposite of what's supposed to happen in the body. And the reason it occurs, the secret to why we are not healing, whether uh, our health challenges involve the skin or whether they involve the bone or the liver or the digestive system, the reason we're not healing, the reason we're not regenerating, the reason we're degenerating is hidden right in the word. The secret to why we're not healing is hidden in plain sight in the very word dis-ease. Disease, chronic degenerative dis-ease, out of ease, lack of ease, which is a synonym for stress. And I know we hear that word all the time, stress. One of the major stresses, one of the major burdens on the body, a stress is a type of burden, one of the major burdens on the body, probably the, the major stressor, the major stressor in the body from a physical perspective is dirty blood. I don't know how many different ways I could say this, but every time somebody calls on this program, somehow we always get back into the blood. It's all about the blood. It says right in the Bible, uh, Leviticus, I think 17, chapter 17, I think it's Leviticus, chapter 17, the life of the body is in the blood behind all disease. 
Behind all re uh, illness is dis-ease, out of ease, and behind all disease, you're going to find blood that's been contaminated, dirty blood, largely from food substances, allergens, undigested particles of food, as well as bacterial outgassings and little chunks of bacterial membranes. These all float in the blood. You guys, the blood has to be pure. The blood has to be clean. Once this stuff gets into the blood, we are off to the dis-ease races. It is the fundamental dis-ease. It's the basic thread, the simple thread that runs through all the complex phenomena of what we call chronic degenerative disease. And this idea that there's a simple thread that runs through seemingly apparently complex phenomena is called simplexity and it's the latest darling in the world of uh, in the world of uh, systems theory systems theory is the study of how systems work the body is a system a system is a unified whole it's made up of a bunch of parts that cannot be removed that's the definition of a system by the way now what does that tell you about our idiotic medical model that cuts and carves and butchers us to get us healthy or uh, chemically butchers us with drugs. That's what a, a drug is. It's like a chemical surgical procedure. Shuts down chemistry. That's what a drug does. A drug is a chemical version of a surgical procedure. It's not permanent like a surgical procedure, but it's the same idea. A system, and the body's a system, the earth is a system, the planet is a system, the galaxy is a system, a cell is a system, an ant is a system, a cucumber is a system. A system is one, com uh, one whole that's made up of a bunch of parts that cannot be removed. So if you take your gallbladder out, you're going to have a problem. By definition, your system is going to be a different system. It's going to be messed up. And this idea of simple threads that run through seemingly complex phenomena is called simplexity. And simplexity is the darling of the, uh, in the world of systems, uh, systems theory, and it's the subject of a lot of research today. The point of understanding simpl simplexity is that by addressing simple threads, we can address complex phenomena. By addressing the simple threads that run through disease, run through all of the various symptoms of disease, we can solve all of our dis-ease problems, no matter how complex they are. That means no matter how difficult our health issues are, no matter how complicated they seem to be, no matter how jumbled up and tangled up our symptomology is, and you won't believe the letters I get, and if you listen to this program, you know, the phone calls we get, there's endless symptomology. It, you can't address the body by addressing all these different symptoms. That's how doctors work. That's why they fail. That's why the medical model gets an F in terms of chronic degenerative disease. If it gets an A in terms of heroic disease, it gets an F. No, an F minus. It's off the charts in terms of its failure for dealing with chronic degenerative disease because it's idiotic. It addresses all of the leaves of the trees, all of the leaves of the tree of disease, and ignores the root. And the only person that benefits is the one who's charging us by the leaf. Two of the simplest threads in all of complex disease are blood, the, di the uh, circulatory system, and bacteria. And when I say bacteria, I'm talking about good bacteria in the microbiome. So it's the circulatory system and the microbiome. If you want to cut to the chase, the root of your tree of disease, no matter how rotten your leaves are, no matter how many rotten leaves you have, each leaf being a symptom, go back to that simple thread that runs through everything in terms of disease, in terms of disease and that's the blood and the lymph, the circulatory system, and the microbiome, the bacteria in the gut. The circulatory system and the microbiome, and addressing both of these compartments can be simplified in itself by simply working on food, by working on the digestive system, which is always, always, always going to be the foundation of health, whether we're talking toenail fungus, heart disease, hyperpigmentation, or cancer, whether we're trying to address multiple sclerosis or melanoma or melasma. We always want to focus on digestive health first. I'm not, uh, I'm not some kind of food Nazi. It's not the point. The point is, is if we have a chronic breakdown disease, it's not a doctor issue. The first thing most of us want to do is go to the doctor for our high blood pressure, go to the doctor for our cold, go to the doctor for our bellyache. I'm telling you, it's not a doctor issue. Now, if you want to abdicate responsibility, there's plenty of doctors who will take that responsibility on by, by drugging us and surgically butchering us up. That's fine. But if you don't, if you're tired of the medical model, if you recognize that there's nothing that the medical model can do for your CDD, chronic degenerative disease, return to the basics, the digestive system first. And I'm talking skin too, because that's what our topic is here. So I'm talking about the skin. Skin issues 
are digestive issues, just like anything else in the body. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time. Talking health, nutrition, nutritional supplementation for health and health issues, as well as uh, digestive strategies, emotional strategies, mental strategies. If you're interested in uh, any of the longevity products we talk about on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and order products directly off the website if you want to start yourself a business and help spread the word about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be and make some money while you're doing it. Please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. We're talking about the skin, but as uh, the skin as it relates to the entire body. The skin is, an, you know, we say it all the time, the skin is the largest organ of the body. It's an organ, but we don't always treat it like we would treat an organ of the body because it's on the outside. It looks like a canvas on the outside of the body, so we have this idea based in... Uh, millennia, really, for thousands upon thousands of years, we had this idea that the skin is a canvas, and all you do is paint it, and we make it look good with makeup or with paint or with some kind of covering. If you got a skin issue, acne, eczema, psoriasis, hyperpigmentation, you got a health issue. If you got a health issue, the way to address it is to deconstruct it, to work backwards, to troubleshoot. If you're an engineer, it's an engineering idea, really. The body is a system, and systems are engineered. So to, to address health issues, we deconstruct them, we work backwards, and the first place to work on is the digestive system. That's because the link between the digestive system and the blood is the foundation of health or the lack thereof. And by working on the digestive system, we work on how we digest food, and we work on the microbiome, the bacteria in the gut. First of all, we look at the relationship between how we process our food. Now, if you just tuned in and you haven't heard this program before, you're thinking, I want to know about my pigment. I want to know about my melasma. What's that got to do with my heartburn? What has that got to do with my bowel movements? And you can be forgiven for thinking that way because this is how our culture works. This is how our health model works. We rarely backtrack and deconstruct, and this is why we rarely get better. We make it some relief, but eventually for most folks, the relief is temporary. Our melasma comes back. Our clots come back. Our stones come back. Our thyroid slows down again. And our, we have to take more and more Synthroid, and our blood pressure goes up again, and we have to take more and more antihypertensives, and we need more and more medical intervention. And who do you think that serves? Not us. Via incomplete digestion, the entrance of partially processed food, especially partially processed proteins and bacteria from the gut and outgassings and fermentation and, uh, and sugar from food, all enter into the blood, and the blood becomes filled with toxins. That's your disease right there. That's it. And I'm talking autoimmune disease. I'm talking cancer. I'm talking diabetes. I'm talking Alzheimer's. I'm talking all the leading causes of death and disease and, uh, and suffering. Do you see how simple this is, you guys? It is so simple. It's scarily simple. Just fasting. I'm not saying fast forever. I'm not saying that never eat again. But just by fasting for three days, you can experience the power of understanding the relationship between the digestive tract and the rest of the body. The incomplete digestion and the entrance of bacterial gases and chunks of bacteria, the blood becomes filled with toxins, with poison. This leads to deficiencies in nutrients. It leads to clotting in the blood. It leads to a, a slowdown in the circulatory system. It leads to a reduction in the electrical charge that is generated by circulating fluid, by circulating blood fluid. That's called hemodynamics, the movement of blood fluid. And this is where stones start. This is where clotting starts. This is where inflammation. In the blood, you get inflammation in the blood, literally. And by the way, the hormone that's partially or, or largely responsible for hormones for inflammation in the blood is called serotonin. How many of you guys knew that serotonin is a blood inflammatory chemical? Stones, clotting, inflammation, immune response in the blood all follow digestive breakdown. And from that point, all our diseases begin, including hyperpigmentation. Yes, this is how melasma and hyperpigmentation are related to our bowel movements via dirty blood. This issue of dirty blood, this toxemia, septicemia, sepsis, whatever you want to call it, squalemia, firmemia, emia meaning blood, firm, squall meaning dirty. Tox, meaning toxin. 
The issue of dirty blood, whatever you want to call it, initiates a chain reaction of emergency response chemistry, survival chemistry. You can imagine to the body, this is the ultimate survival threat, something in the blood. Once stuff gets in the blood, boom, the adrenal glands, cortisol, stress is initiated, inflammation begins, and the body begins a fight for its life, and we call that disease. This ease is the body fighting for its life, and it's not a doctor issue. It's a lifestyle issue. And any medical representative who takes our money or recommends poison drugs or surgical butchering or removal of organs, wombs and gallbladders and breasts to address these kinds of condition, uh, conditions may be a nice person personally, and i got a lot of friends who are doctors. They may be a nice person, but they're not acting in our interest, even if they think they are. Anybody who thinks it's in your interest to take out a gallbladder without addressing the bile and the digestive system is not operating in your or my or the public interest. Now, the word stress has become familiar to people, but unfortunately, that's not such a good thing because it becomes a, jar it becomes a cliche, it becomes jargon. Just because we understand or we hear the word stress doesn't mean we understand what it means. As it turns out, stress is really just a trigger. In and of itself, stress is not a problem. Stress is simply destabilization. The Latin term for destabilize, to destabilize, is exercise, as we've said before. Ex arc, which is where the term exercise comes from, ex arc means to destabilize. And so destabilization and exercise are, two basic, are basically the two, two of the same ideas, are based in the same concept. And that's not necessarily, I mean, stress is not necessarily a bad thing. Stress is a type of exercise. And we know exercise is required for growth. So stress is required for growth. Stress is not a problem. We hear stress all the time. Oh, you got to stop stressing. Too much stress. Too much stress. It's not the stress that's a problem. It's how we respond to the stress. When the body does not grow in response to stress, it manifests, it experiences something called strain. And that is the problem. Yeah, we used to say when I was a kid, stress and strain. You don't hear that much, uh, those, that phrase any, uh, that much anymore. Stress and strain. Stress is not a problem. Strain is a problem. By the way, these are engineering terms. These have to do with bridges and such. A, a bridge is supposed to be able to handle stress without strain. Stress is, stress is somehow metabolized by the body and actually turns into growth under appropriate conditions, under the conditions of appropriate rest following that stress, under the appropriate conditions of nutrition following that stress, we grow. Without the nutrition, without the rest, we experience strain, and that is a problem. The way to address stress is to make sure, through our actions, that we tell the body it's safe. When the body is stressed under safety conditions, it grows. And how do we tell the body it's safe? Through diet, from a physical perspective anyway, through diet, through nutrition, and through oxygen, and through the removal of toxins, especially sugar. And I know some of you out there are listening for the first time, saying, what has this got to do with skin? Everything. Cortisol, adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, all menopausal and perimenopausal symptoms, and hyperpigmentation, and stress and strain all go together because they're part of the same breakdown processes the same breakdown processes that are involved in any health challenge. Now we're going to spend some time talking about internal strategies and nutritional strategies to keep your, your skin pigment, your skin tone glowing and even and healthy and responsive, even if you're in the sun. But topically, there's a lot we can do for hyperpigmentation because the skin is on the outside of the body. So there's some, some really interesting topical strategies. We've talked about a few of them, but we're going to spend the next couple of days talking about topical ways to address hyperpigmentation. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're coming back with your phone calls, 844-236-6010. We are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got a uh, couple lines open for you. If we left you on hold in the past, tell our call screener that we left you on the line, and we'll get you first up. 844-236-6010. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity, longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, please go to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order right off the website or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in any of our truth treatment products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And also you might want to check out my Facebook page. We post on that regularly, skincare stuff anyway. Uh, not my personal page, which is all filled up, but The Truth with Ben. That's my 
Facebook uh, Skin Health page, The Truth with Ben. Okay, let's see here. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. This is from uh, the, uh, just got this yesterday, Proceedings of National of the National Academy of Science Journal. Check this out. The microbiome, that is the universe of bacteria that live in the gut, the microbiome of a woman's reproductive tract may predict preterm birth. Mama's gut bacteria will determine the health of her baby. Preemies, premature babies, are notoriously associated with dysbiosis in the mother. Messed up gut bacteria. Moms, if you want a good supplement to take for your baby, in addition to your healthy start pack and your omega-3 fats and iodine and zinc and magnesium, make sure you're using your Biolumin Nightly Essence. Everybody needs the Biolumin Nightly Essence, but especially if you're having a baby. Quote, the microbiome in the reproductive tract of pregnant women who later had a baby born too soon are significantly different from those of women who delivered full term. Moms, give your gift, the, uh, give your baby the gift of health by getting on the Biolumin Nightly Essence. I like three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night, of course, fermented food as well. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's move to RC in California. Welcome, RC. What's up, buddy? Hey, Ben, I called yesterday to give you a call back. I was asking about diclofenac sodium. But- Oh, yeah, diclofenac. Uh, oh. is It's Motrin. It's fancy-schmancy Motrin. Kidney problems, liver problems, digestive problems, blood problems are all associated with these kinds of drugs. They're technically okay. called non-steroidal, because they're not a steroid, anti-inflammatory agents. They're drugs that shut down the body's immune response. The inflammatory response, as uncomfortable as it is, is a sign of the body protecting itself, and only an idiot would recommend that we suppress that immune or inflammatory function aside from maybe very very short term for pain if we're absolutely miserable but only a boneheaded medical professional would leave somebody on an anti-inflammatory drug for a long period of time and all you got to do is google adverse reactions and toxicity associated with these kinds of drugs which by the way they're not benign we think these things are benign motrin and tylenol and aspirin and and diclofenac sodium which which they call sulindac that's what they called it back when i was practicing pharmacy when i was doing my uh, uh, retail pharmacy thing naproxen all of these drugs suppress the defensive response now if it's idiotic to suppress the defensive response at least long term then the opposite is true it's intelligent to figure out why is the body inflaming and behind it guess what you're going to find dirty blood broken down cells following dirty blood. The broken down cells create an inflammatory or defensive response following the dirty blood. So what do you do? You work on the digestive system, you patch up the gut, you get on your probiotics, you use your healthy start pack. By the way, the ultimate EFAs are a natural anti-inflammatory. Vitamin C, natural anti-inflammatory. Vitamin E, natural anti-inflammatory. These are non-drug anti-inflammatories that work to balance out the body's chemistry, not shut it down the way drugs work. So for uh, inflammation, aside from the obvious, which is correcting anything that's getting, correcting um, digestive difficulties, which lead to toxic blood, aside from that, you got it, you can, uh, you got to get on a good nutritional supplement program and you want to be able to exploit or leverage vitamin and nutritional anti-inflammatories. As I say, magnesium, vitamin E, uh, essential fatty acids, omega essential fatty acids, alpha lipoic yeah. acid, along with vitamin E, is a great anti-inflammatory. I'm sorry, RC. Did you did you you were going to say something? Well, well, mine was a uh, mine's a mechanical. I uh, same uh, lower back L4, L5. Same, same. Forget the L4, L5, L3. That's just medical gibberish. It doesn't matter. You're inflaming everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're inflaming, RC. L3, L4, T3, T4, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're inflaming. Now, if it's mechanical, which can happen as we get older, then you're breaking down. Then you got the same idea. Then you're not absorbing nutrients or getting them. Protein, essential fats, the same thing we talk about all the time. A bone soup, you might want to throw in the glucogel caps. But go the, try the anti-inflammatories, too, the vitamin E. Oh, well, uh, I've been on your stuff. I mean, you know, I've been doing this for years. Well, you got some I, more I, stuff. You got you got some more stuff to do if you're still having that inflammation. Well, it's, it's just that one area in the back. That's no, it's not. That's just out. the one RC. No, it's not. That's just the one area you see it or you feel it. Nobody just inflames in one area. That's the point I'm trying to make here. The whole body inflames, but you feel it in one area. 
Okay? So linked, and another thing is, if you have digestive issues, look to specific foods, and you'll notice there's a phenomena called postprandial, that means after you eat, post means after, prandial means eating, postprandial inflammation, which will exacerbate the problem. Thanks, RC, for your call, buddy. Hope we helped you out. Okay, uh, let's go to Stan in Florida. What's up, my friend? How you doing? Hey, how's it going, Ben? Can you hear me okay? Don't, yes, sir. What's up? All right, Ben. Well, I have a uh, friend of mine who was diagnosed with diabetes at a young age and now at the age of 40 is on dialysis and is awaiting uh, kidney transplant. Organs, pancreas and kidney. Yeah, kidney and uh, pancreas. Uh, pancreas and kidney. Okay. First of all, we've been talking today and probably, you know, for a long time about dirty blood. What, is the kidney, what do the kidneys do? Clean the blood. Do you know? They filter the blood. Exactly. Think of it like a spaghetti strainer. The blood goes through the spaghetti strainer, and then it comes out the other end clean. But if it's dirty, the kidneys become toxic. All that filtering starts to clog up the kidneys. The kidneys are ridiculously, unbelievably nanostructured, nano-architected. The, the blood vessels in the kidneys are microscopic. I mean, you can't even imagine what a microscopic blood vessel is, a capillary is, the blood cells. If it's not microscopic, it's pretty close to microscopic. The point is, is that they're very, very tiny, and they're easily clogged. Kidney disease is an epidemic. Dialysis is an epidemic because we have an epidemic of dirty blood. Diabetes and kidney disease go hand in hand. Diabetes and kidney stones go hand in hand. So why would diabetes be related to kidney disease? Because sugar is a toxin, and sugar clogs the blood vessels, and sugar damages the blood vessels. So if you're diabetic and you now need dialysis, that means you have not been paying attention to your diabetes. That means you've been ignoring your diabetes, and now it's like, help me, Mr. Wizard. Remember that cartoon? Help me, Mr. Wizard. The guy, Tennessee Tuxedo, gets into all of this problems, and finally he can't, the problems are too big for him to handle, or to ignore, I should say. And he goes, help me, Mr. Wizard. Well, it's too late. You got to work on the blood before the kidneys get damaged. Now, whether his kidneys are damaged beyond repair, I don't know, but I can tell you that the kidneys are unbelievably redundant in the sense that you can get by with 20% kidney function. 80% of your kidney function can be gone and you could be and you can make it. You can survive. By the time you're on dialysis, you're even less than 20%. So what you got to do is you got to start cleaning the blood. What I would be doing if I was your friend and he doesn't want to transplant, he doesn't want to be surgically butchered up, stop eating fast. Then reintroduce foods and start to eliminate problem foods. There's a few more things. Can you hang on? Stan, can you hang on for us? I've got a few more things to tell you. Hopefully you can hang on. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. We are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Talking to Stan in Florida about kidneys and pancreases and diabetes. Diabetes and kidney disease go hand in hand. Do they really want to do a pancreatic transplant, did you say? Well, she um, is going to get a kidney, so she thinks she wants to do a uh, pancreas at the same time. So she's waiting. Look, for you guys, this is a... The, you know, you can have it done, and if there's an emergency, there's an emergency, but the quality of life following a kidney transplant or any transplant is not good. Do you know kidney disease is, uh, affects 25, almost 25% of people over the age of 60, but only about 0.5% of people between the ages of 20 and 39? It's a long-term process, and it takes a lot of years of crapping up the blood to be uh, to to have your kidneys so messed up that you need to be on dialysis or or a transplant. So what you got to do is you got to start to clean the blood. The major interface between the blood and the outside world is the digestive system. So you got to work there. And I don't mean to just be a one-trick pony here, but I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to make a difference. And you can't make a difference, Stan, unless you start to work on the digestive system. That means the microbiome. That means the bioluminightly essence and fermented foods and uh, anything you could do to create an environment that's conducive to bacteria. Apple cider vinegar, keep the sugar intake down. That's obvious if she's a diabetic. She should have, at this point, if, she has, if she's been diabetic for how long? How old is this gal, Stan? Around 40, and I think right. she was so diagnosed she, around 40. This is, this is a major degenerative condition for somebody who's 40 years old. So this is somebody who, how well do you know her? Um, Acquaintance kind of thing? Cool old friend from back in the day, but we All just right. got introduced here after about 10 years. Okay, well, she must be going out of her way to destroy her body. 
That tells me if you're 40 and you got a disease, a kidney disease to the point where you need a transplant, you're 25 years, you're, you're degenerating 25 years too fast. You know, this is something that happens when you're old. It shouldn't happen to anybody, but it really happens when we're older. So that tells me she's either been smoking or she's been mentally or emotionally stressed, strained, I should say, or burning her body. But if you want a nutritional strategy, food, fasting, bioluminite essence, fermented foods, uh, uh, apple cider vinegar, more fiber, vegetable juices, bone soup. I can give you a ton more. Fasting, chromium and vanadium, that's the Sweeties product. The Fucoid Z, wonderful for cleaning the blood, also for the digestive tract. Healthy start pack, sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. She probably wants a little bit extra vitamin E, 400 IU a day, and a little bit extra zinc, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. Make sure she's acidifying, that is uh, making her stomach acid when she eats her food and when she takes her supplements, because chances are she's not making enough stomach acid and she may want to try uh, after meals an hour an hour and a half after meals a little sodium bicarbonate because probably she's not making that either with a pancre pancreatic problem there's tons of stuff but that's a woman who's very very degenerated and uh, she needs to start where she can the most important place which is the digestive system and the healthy start pack okay stan i'm gonna move on thank you so much for your call buddy i hope we helped you all right dr renee in texas what kind of doctor are you dr renee um am i on Yes, ma'am. Are you oh, a physician hi. or what kind of doc? I'm a chiropractor. Nice, nice. We're in Texas. And Austin. Good deal. Hi. Have we met? Have you and I met? Well, I didn't meet you. I, I see you when you come to Austin at Brave New Books and the college, and okay, I've come deal. to every one of those shows. Oh, good deal. So how can we help you, Doc? <clears throat> well, I got a call yesterday from a patient who um, I've been working on trying to get her gut cleaned up and um, so forth, and extra after I come to your uh, your shows, I always go back and I relay the information that I've learned and I listen to the show. And uh, she went to her medical doctor and she said she's full of H. pylori. That's very common, very common. H. pylori, and so, yeah, go ahead. Right, and so um, she wanted to tell me because she thought I'd be interesting because the way that I work is I work on that spiritual level. I work on nice. the, the meridians and... Very nice. Uh, and her, yeah, and so... Um, as you, when you're on the talks, you usually say, you know, there's usually a spiritual component first. Absolutely. Take care of it. Yes. Um, and so, you know, she has done a detox. She had been working on it. And so I guess I'm just at a, a point of uh, my hands are up and I'm like, well, I'll reach out to you. Okay. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's like that whole idea of simplexity. There's too many think there's too many working parts. We want to backtrack to the root. H. pylori is a digestive condition. We all have H. pylori in our bodies. H. pylori, however, invades the, the digestive tract and starts to suppress stomach acid. And that's really where we're off, where the disease process or one of the beginning parts of the disease process. So First of all, for H. pylori, you want to balance it out with good bacteria, fermented foods and probiotics, the bioluminitely essence and, and uh, kimchi and miso and tempeh and sauerkraut and anything you do that's fermented foods. That will help balance out the H. pylori. Also, H. pylori needs to, uh, an acid-free environment to proliferate. One of, the, one of the first things H. pylori does in the stomach is it starts to suppress stomach acid so that it can proliferate. So by replacing that stomach acid, and I'd be using, if she's, she's that significantly uh, infected, Infected, I would be uh, using HCL drops. Most people can use just apple cider vinegar to acidify the stomach, but uh, she may need HCL drops, hydrochloric acid drops, which she'll have to get her pharmacist to make or her doctor to write a prescription for. So first thing for H. pylori is probiotics to balance out the bacteria, and then secondly is uh, acidification of the digestive tract with HCL drops. Then the third thing you want to do is start to look for foods that are related to digestive issues and eliminate those foods. That's the elimination diet. I'm sure you know what that is. Do a food diary, start to keep track of foods, and then the less work her digestive tract has to do, the less chopping and enzymes and bile secretion that has to go on, the healthier she's going to be. So using soups and juices, especially bone soup, chicken soup with the bone, so she gets the cartilage that will help kind of coat the digestive system and soothe the digestive system, or digestive tract, the intestine, I should say. Uh, the Fucoid Z, uh, anything mucilaginous, algae is mucilaginous. There's herbs like colt's foot and mallow, which are mucilaginous. Those will help. Uh, anything with hyaluronic acid, even hyaluronic acid supplements can help coat the digestive tract. And then she wants to move on to the blood sugar system uh, with X 
excess sugar or non-metabolized sugar or too much sugar in the system, she can end up with something called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and that can compound the H. pylori infection problem. So keeping her sugar intake down is also going to be important. And then oxygenation, deep breathing is also critical. She cannot heal. Her body cannot resolve the infection under conditions of burden and stress. So using oxygen and activation of the relaxation nervous system is also important. I'm not going to get into the spiritual and mental and emotional components. Those are all relevant as it sounds like you understand. So she needs to address those. But from a physical perspective, oxygenation, uh, relaxing the body with hot water, and um, uh, either massage or Reiki or yoga, any of these relaxation techniques will help as well. So focus on the digestive tract, use blood sugar support, stabilize uh, the, system, the system via parasympathetic activation, relaxing the body that is, and then that should take care of the H. pylori infection, especially the good bacteria, the probiotics. Is that helpful? Excellent. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you, Dr. Renee. Take care. Okay, a baby, a BB? How do you say that? A BB? A BB, yes. Abibi, I like that. Abibi. Abibi. Yeah. What's up, Abibi? I'm calling of, uh, my daughter. And yes. She, uh, her uh, body mass index is 29.94. I'm sorry. Say uh, that again, Abibi. I did not understand. Say that again. Oh, her body mass index, it was 29.94. Which index? Body, no, body, body mass index. BMI. Oh, body mass index. I see. Okay, so what's, tell me what the health issue is. Uh, the health issue, her blood pressure is a little high. Her blood pressure is high? Uh, yeah. And hemoglobin A1C. H1, a, hemoglobin A1C is high too? Yeah last, yeah, last year it was 5. Now this year I checked it's 5.4. How old is she? She is 19. Okay, she, is she overweight? Yeah. Okay, she's got a blood sugar problem. Are you, are you uh, Middle Eastern? No, I'm from Ethiopia. Ethiopia, okay. So you're eating, you're yes. eating that bread stuff, that sponge bread stuff and the baklava and all that? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> you got to lay off that stuff. She's, she's got blood sugar problems, sir, uh, and she needs to stabilize that quickly because she's only 19 years old. If she's already got high blood pressure, that's a very bad sign, especially with yes. the other issues. Blood so page, uh, Her blood pressure is 135 by 53. Okay. Her rate is 85. Okay, well, so there's something going on in her system. First of all, you've got to you start working on her blood sugar. More protein, more coconut oil, more omega-3 fatty acids. Get her on the Healthy Start Pack. Probably get her on the Slender FX, too. Have her eating eggs and, uh, and fish, any kind of protein foods that she can eat, and wean herself off of the fast-burning sugars and the sweets and the fruits and the fruit juices. A little bit of fruit, but not a lot. So you got to treat her like a diabetic. She's, she's pre-diabetic or diabetic for sure. Uh, the Sweeties is a great product, the Healthy Start Pack. That goes without saying. And then you're going to also want to work on her uh, digestive system as well. There's a very important link between the microbiome, good bacteria, and blood sugar. Habibi, I'm, just, I'm sorry, we're just out of time. But if you call back tomorrow, we can finish this up. And uh, if we left you on hold again, I apologize. Call back tomorrow, tell our call screener, and we'll get you first up. All right, that's all the time we have for today. On the Bright Side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com, and you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.